first leg of my summer vacation was a flight on LH-433, Lufthansa 747-800. I've flown the Queen of the Skies back since the days of TWA and Pan Am, but my past flights on older 747-400s on United and British Airways have illustrated the plane's age. The 747-800, however, is a new beast, introduced in 2012 and only serving a handful of carriers. I began my luxurious business class adventure as I always do, by taking Chicago CTA's Blue Line out to O'Hare. I arrived early so that I could enjoy the United Polaris Lounge, which I had access to as I was on an intercontinental Star Alliance flight in business class. To get to the lounge, take the escalators down to the sea concourse, and pass through the psychedelic tunnel of love that eerily plays the United theme music. The Polaris Lounge is slightly to the left of the escalators and clearly marked. Prior to the introduction of other such lounges and American flagship lounges, this was, and still may be, the very best airline lounge in the United States. It is spacious, thoughtfully laid out, and has everything a traveler might want before a long flight. I started with a paper plane cocktail, the signature beverage of the lounge. The main area has a small buffet, which does have a range of food options from healthy to decadent. The chicken pot pie in particular was pretty good. For dessert, there was a selection of petit four, and I tried each kind. For science, of course. There are shower and relaxation rooms which I did not explore, and an entire hallway of individual bathrooms. The bathrooms were incredibly large and completely spotless. In the back, and easily overlooked, is a full sit-down dining experience. The menu is limited, but more substantial than the buffet in the front. The wine selection was also pretty varied. I went with the shrimp and grits and a glass of Riesling. Overall, the dish was pretty good, but needed some salt. The views from the lounge are great, though the shades were drawn against the setting sun. Overall, I really love the Polaris Lounge and would rather fly Star Alliance carriers like Lufthansa and ANA that depart from Terminal 1 over Asiana from Terminal 5 or other carriers out of O'Hare. I should also mention that the Wi-Fi was the fastest I've ever experienced in a lounge. Unfortunately, the Polaris Lounge closed at 9 p.m., while my flight didn't take off until 10.30, so I made my way to the United Club Lounge near the gate. It was hot, crowded, and didn't remotely hold a candle to its more premium brother. Soon it was time to board. There's no limousine service here, and first class passengers had to line up with the rest of us. As it was a full flight and at night, I was limited in the footage I could take on board. Business class on the 747 is divided into three cabins, two on the main deck and one on the upper deck. It's 2-2-2 two, two, two on the main deck and 2-2 two, two on the upper deck. As much as I've always wanted to be on the upper deck, I selected 5D, a center seat on the main deck, to ensure I'd have aisle access and no one else would have to step over me while I tried to sleep. Lufthansa is in the process of upgrading their bedding, but my flight had not yet been upgraded to larger pillows and mattress pads. The seat has two significant drawbacks, the overall lack of privacy, and the fact you end up playing footsie with your neighbor. The seat is perfectly functional, with a storage compartment near the aisle and easy to use seat back controls. The tray was easy to use and importantly allowed one to get up from the seat while it was deployed, which is a great feature to have. The TV monitors were older and sluggish, but could be controlled by either remote or by touchscreen. They were also not particularly adjustable, 
only rotating slightly from their off-center position. It did offer live TV on a handful of channels, though the signal was intermittent. I should also point out that it forced you to watch commercials before a movie, which I think feels tacky in business class. There were two external cameras which I could watch, though the resolution left much to be desired. Service began with sparkling wine before takeoff, and hot towels, unwarmed nuts, and another beverage after takeoff. For dinner, I was served a vegetable salad and rosemary bread. Both were fine, though the salad had not been fully dressed. It was fine. For mains, there was a choice between beef, salmon, and mushroom pasta. I went with the pasta, which looked rather strange, but again, was fine. For dessert, I had some haagen ice cream. While some airlines take the ice cream out of the bowl, Lufthansa served it in its original cup and completely rock hard. For an amenity kit, Lufthansa used this really cute bag, which I may use as a mini toiletry kit. Inside were the typical socks, eye mask, and personal products. Noise cancelling headphones were provided next to the tray, and unlike some carriers like American Airlines, were available for the entire flight. However, they were physically locked to the console, which in my mind treats business class passengers as if they were criminals. There were only two bathrooms for both business class cabins on the main deck, and I often had to wait. While they were large and included amenities, these were not restocked throughout the flight. As the cabin was dark, I was unable to take much footage of the bed, but it adjusted to be fully flat. The pillow and blankets were fine, although one of those new mattress pads would have been a welcome addition. As my primary goal on the flight was to sleep, I quickly popped a melatonin and was able to sleep a solid four and a half hours. I should take a moment to describe the service on the flight. It was efficient. At no point did the crew introduce themselves or address me by name. At no point did they proactively offer me anything. Supposedly, I could have notified them that I wanted an express breakfast so I could sleep longer, but the option was never presented. Like the food, the service was... fine. I awoke just in time for breakfast, which consisted of salmon, muesli, fruit, and a pastry. Of these, the muesli was the only memorable component. Shortly after breakfast, we began our descent into Frankfurt, and the flight came to an end. There is an arrival lounge in Frankfurt with showers and a full breakfast, but it unfortunately was closed prior to my flight's arrival. Instead, I took the convenient train to Mainz for the day. Walking around the town, seeing some Gutenberg Bibles in the Gutenberg Museum, and enjoying a beer and schnitzel while watching the World Cup. Overall, the flight was fine. Not terrible. Fine. It in no way is an aspirational experience, but my goal was to sleep so I could hit the ground running, and I was able to do just that. It may not be the best business class for crossing the Atlantic, but given the plentiful award availability and large network of connecting flights, Lufthansa is a fine option. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.